Hello folks, it's the Pace Chaser again, welcome to another one of my videos. This is another one of the model reviews where we look at some of the older diecast releases that are available on the second hand market. And today we've got the Britbus catalogue number AS104, the AEC Merlin in Hanson Sussex livery. So it's in a normal Britbus box, the cardboard outer and a plastic inner tray. So I'll take it out of the box and we'll see what we've got. So there we go, the AEC Merlin was actually the AEC Swift, but uh, London Transport, when they bought the chassis, called it the AEC Merlin for some reason. So this one in real life was new to London Transport. If you think it's not your era, then think again, it had a very long service life. The real bus uh, registration number EGN683J was new as London Transport SMS683 in July 1971. In 1978, it was withdrawn when its initial certificate of fitness expired. London Transport didn't really get on with the type, and it passed into preservation in July 1978. In 1988, it was bought by Hanson Sussex and put back into PSV service, and they ran it until around 1995, so it uh, survived quite a long time. Uh, Britbus did quite a few variations of these uh, vehicles. did the long and the short version, and single door and double door. This is the short single door version. Uh, the real bus when it was new had two doors, but Hanson Sussex filled in the uh, middle one to make it uh, front entrance only. As you can see there, the condition it's modelled here. So this release, as I say, catalogue number AS1-04, released in December 2006. And like mo most Brit bus releases, it was a limited edition of just 816 pieces. And this apparently is model number 251 in that series. Uh, despite that, they are fairly easy to come by, these Hanson Sussex ones, although there are only 800 odd of them made. They're not uh, particularly scarce at the moment. You can find a lot of them for sale second hand. So if you do want one, don't panic. This one I got cheaply because, as you can see, the paint on the front is chipped. Uh, I will issue some words of warning about Britbus models later on. Uh, and the sort of pricing and buying second hand of them. But uh, this one, as I say, the only problem it has really is this. Uh, chipping of the paint which I knew about the seller had already said that so let's have a look at it and we'll start as always with the front the uh, front looks pretty reasonable it's a good representation of the real thing got the ventilators there that are kind of there's a dint in the casting actually for them the, the vents themselves are printed on but there is a bit of relief in the casting the blind um, has got a glass front which is a nice touch and it's actually stuck in behind it's on Route 66 to Old Bosham, which is near Chichester, one of the routes that Hanson Sussex uh, ran on. Come down the windscreen is a very good representation of the real thing, the barrel-shaped windscreen of the real thing. You've got the wipers there that are individual etched items um, added on. The uh, lower one, or the near side one, should I say, I don't think you can see that on the video really, it's not actually touching the screen. They do tend to bend quite a bit, and that one has, it's come away from the screen itself. But it doesn't look too bad from normal viewing distances, you can't really tell. I could bend it back, uh, and I probably will do, but I don't really want to snap it off. You've got a representation of the tax disc holders in the windscreen there, just printed on. And then you come down, you've got the vent under the windscreen uh, printed on, but quite prominent as it would have been in real life. And the lights, there's a kind of uh, clear plastic stuck in, so there is some relief, so they're not just printed on. And it looks very effective, indicators, headlights and fog lights there. I'm not too worried about the chip paint. You could, I could fill that in. I might uh, paint it over a little bit of grey paint as to act as an undercoat and a bit of cream over it. But uh, I might just leave it. The real vehicles did get quite battered sometimes uh, in service. Go around to the near side. The door detail is printed onto the glazing. Um, there is a bit of relief to it actually, but it's part printed. It does look a bit uh, strange really, but it's not too bad. Um, I've seen worse. And again, the vents at the bottom of the doors, they're just uh, printed on. Windows look quite effective, the uh, sliding vents um, picked out in silver. You've got, if you can see it there, the no entry sign in the window there, which would have related to the centre exit, which would have been there. It's quite possible that when Han Hanson Sussex converted it to single order, did actually leave that in the window. That's probably a, a realistic feature, so it's a nice touch. And again, some of the panel detail in there and the vents printed on. Wheels look pretty decent. Um, they're a good representation of the real thing with the... Uh, sort of uh, wheel ring 
the nut ring, should I say, on the uh, wheel there, as the real thing would have had. And it looked very effective. Printing nicely done, livery nicely printed on as well. Go around to the back. Again, the destination blind is behind a bit of uh, clear plastic. I say glass for the front. It's actually clear plastic, obviously, but uh, it's again stuck behind. It looks nice, really effective as a result of that. And the blind's just got the fleet name and the uh, basic address of the operator, Emsworth. Uh, repeat of the lettering that's on the back there but as the real thing would have had and again it looks pretty decent the rear window had this uh, opening emergency section uh, emergency window section and the real thing and again that's printed on but it looks really really effective got the grill underneath the window there um, part relief part printed registration plate again printed on a bit of relief which looks good uh, strange that the lights are picked out in different colors on this one which looks a bit weird um, it's a shame they haven't painted over those. I don't know if it's uh, they've just missed odd ones or the entire casting range is like that. But it does detract from the uh, appearance of what otherwise is a really stunning rear end. And then we go on to the offside. Again, nicely done. The grill there in a bit of relief and printing. It's a mixture of the two. Got the uh, panel lines nicely uh, moulded onto the side there. And again, the wheel's looking pretty decent. Got uh, separate mirrors, um, indicators as well, which look pretty good. If we go to the roof, again the panel lines are nicely moulded and the little uh, ventilators there as well. Looks uh, pretty decent. And we turn over to the chassis. Brit bus normally have a quite detailed chassis. And you can see the uh, various framework pieces are picked out. Fuel tank, representation of the engine and the exhaust system there. So it's all nicely done there. Have a look at the interior, it's moulded in different colours, the seats are in blue, the yeah, seat back grab rails are picked out in silver, the floor is brown, uh, the rear of the seats is blue as well which it maybe shouldn't be but uh, it looks really reasonable, it's, it's good that they've uh, picked out in different colours, it looks pretty good actually, looks pretty decent, it gives a bit of relief rather than printing in one colour like most interiors are on model buses so it's a really nice feature. So I did say I'd issue some words of warning. Um, when I saw this listed on the internet, it obviously said about the chip paint, but the price was quite cheap, and the wheel arches were visible in the pictures, which they shouldn't be. And I was a bit worried that uh, there might be some bodywork problems causing the chassis to uh, drop out, but uh, luckily there weren't. The chassis was quite loose. Um, it was sagging a bit when I got it, but I pushed it back and it snapped back into place. But as you can see, it does move about. It is quite loose in the uh, bodywork. Now one of the things these Brit bus castings do um, suffer from, not just the AAC Merlins, but quite a few of them, is that they tend to start bulging. Um, the bodies are a strange mixture of kind of an alloy metal and plastic that's kind of mixed in together. You normally find that the window pillars are plastic, but the bit underneath is this alloy metal. And it does tend to suffer from this thing where it starts to bulge outwards. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it, it's, it's uh, irreversible unfortunately. It does tend to make the chassis start to drop out because obviously the body's not holding it um, properly. But this one appears to be uh, square and proper as it should be, which is good. So the chassis has just come loose by itself um, for a different reason. But have a look carefully when you're buying one on the internet. Have a look at the photographs. And if it is bulging out, then just avoid it, basically. As I say, you can't reverse it. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. If you try and take the body to pieces, I've had them in. I tried to bend it back, it just shatters to a thousand pieces. Um, the last one of these AEC Merlins I had is uh, parts of it are in the spares box and most of it went in the bin. So I tried to bend the, the side back and it just shattered into, as I say, a thousand pieces. Um, I've tried other Brit Bus ones cutting the um, bulging bit of bodywork out to try and put a bit of plastic in to make it square. And again, it won't cut, it just shatters after a bit. So it is uh, irreversible. So if you have a look carefully at the photos, uh, if you're buying one or if you're buying one actually in the flesh have a careful look at the model and if the sides are bulging just uh, basically avoid it unless you can park it on your display in a way that you can't see it and it doesn't bother you but uh, yeah don't think you can repair it because you can't you will end up with uh, a load of shattered pieces uh, across your workbench and again that is the voice of experience speaking but if you can find um, a good Example like this one, a good square example. What sort of price are we looking at? Well, this one, because of the damaged paint, was £16.50, including postage. I think it was £12.50 plus £4 postage. Uh, I've had a look on the internet. Um, 
by way of research for this video and the prices I could see um, for this particular one the Hanson Sussex were between £29.99 and £40.19 um, all including postage so £30 to £40 so they are normally quite expensive I did quite well to find one uh, this cheap you can sometimes find them a bit cheaper if you shop around so well, I've seen them for about £20 but yeah um, certainly when I looked at this in early April 2024 the cheapest I could find was £30 and the most expensive was 40 the other AEC mailing releases vary between £23 and £58.49. Some of them, particularly the London ones, are more collectible and do uh, attract higher prices. So yeah, as I say, between the low 20s and about £60 for the uh, non handsome Sussex releases, the different versions that they've done. And as I say, the London ones are uh, particularly sought after and usually quite expensive. So if you can find one at a cheaper price, then go with it. But all in all, very nice model. It looks very good indeed. This one's on, off on one of my displays um, of various ex-London buses and London buses. But yeah, it's well worth buying. Um, as I said, they're not scarce, even though they were limited editions. So if you want one, go out and get one. Thank you as always for watching. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.